Hello and welcome to part one of our measurement of interference in 5G TDE systems using the time-gated measurement function. Here we would like to familiarize you with the measurement and the display. In part two, we will then hide an interference signal under the 5G signal and make it visible again with the help of the time-gated measurement function. What sounds like rocket science at first is not that difficult if you get it right. To show it properly from scratch, let's start with a reset for the settings. For this measurement, it's essential to synchronize the signal shark with the GPS time clock. Otherwise, the measurement signal will slowly drift away on the time axis. For us, this means timestamp synchronization PPS and PPS source is the active GNSS source. As feedback that the signal shark has synchronized, we see the sign or rather double sign symbol on the display. Let's first get an overview of the N78 band where we can find 5G TDD systems here in Germany. On the far right is a Deutsche Telekom service, which we want to take a closer look at. The signaling is at 3.6264 GHz, a value that the operator or the local regulator will certainly know by heart. Knowledge of the signaling frequency is not absolutely necessary for the subsequent measurement, but let's start with something known and constant, the signaling, before we deal with the unknown, the interferer. If we now set the spectrogram of the real-time analysis to 400 kHz resolution bandwidth and the measurement time to as fast as possible, we can already see the signaling that repeats every 20 milliseconds, a value that we will need later. If we speed up the RBW and the measurement time again, we can see that this system is with a beamforming antenna due to the large number of broadcast signals. But we will see this more clearly later in the IQ analyzer. So let's open a new task called IQ Analyzer Time Gated. We go back to our known frequency. At the top left, we see the spectrum for an overview. The blue window marks the frequency range that we want to analyze in the IQ analyzer. The width can be set with the channel bandwidth CBW. Around 7 MHz is sufficient for signaling. In the IQ magnitude view, we can now see the level within the CBW over time. Unfortunately, the signaling is not always visible. This is indicated by the time axis, which only shows 10 milliseconds at the moment. Let's go to the config and set the recording duration to 20 milliseconds, the value we saw at the beginning of the measurement as a repetition rate of the broadcast signals. And then the entire time information between two broadcast signals appears on the time axis and the signaling starts from the left edge. We owe this to the fact that Signal Shark and the frames of mobile phone systems in Germany always start synchronously to the full second. If this is not the case, we can correct this with an offset on the signal shark. Now let's zoom into the broadcasting signals. We can clearly see the individual broadcast signals. You can zoom in almost endlessly and analyze the individual signals with a resolution of 104 nanoseconds. If you now need to find a fault in a mobile radio system, with this view, you now have the option to analyze the signal down to the latest resource block. 
and not just signals from the memory, but directly and live, a real highlight. And we are already in the middle of time-gated measurement. If we now turn the other screens back on, we will see the IQ spectrogram at the bottom right. This spectrogram only shows the time range that we have selected in the IQ magnitude. In other words, time-gated. It always repeats the same broadcast block. All other signals in the time range are hidden. In between, perhaps difficult to recognize in the video, a fine white line. This is to show us that the next measurement is about to start. The RBW and overlapping can now be used to optimize the display. And you can use markers to measure the signal and display the corresponding spectrum at any time in the top right of the view. But now we are already deep in the signal analysis. We actually wanted to find interference. To do this, we need to know when the uplink takes place. Here in Germany, this is quite simple. At the end of each subframe. So let's zoom into the last subframe. It's easy to see how the downlinks are sent in the front left part. In contrast, the right part is relatively quiet. It's important to note that the measurement at this moment are taking place at a rooftop station with a direct line of sight to the base station. A mobile device in the immediate vicinity is not to be expected and the uplink is correspondingly quiet. From approximately 19.35 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds, we find the uplink and the flexible interval. So we zoom in again. Now the spectrogram only shows us the signal in the uplink. We are ready for a time-gated measurement. So much for the introduction to the IQ analyzer. With the knowledge we have now gained, we can make a measurement with the hidden interferer signals in part 2. Good luck hunting interferers with the signal shark, your NADA safety test solutions.